Hey, what's up guys, Vanderim here. Today I have a video about gearing in Black Desert. Um, and by that I don't mean how to acquire the gear, but um, gear choices and what pieces of gear you'll want. Um, this will be sorceress focused, but the information in this video will be very helpful for all classes. So let's just get right into it. By the way, I'm going to put all the links I used in this video in the description below my video. Okay, so this first gear set I'm showing you for Sorceress is basically a budget build uh, for PvP. So if you're a Sorceress getting into the game and you want to PvP, this will probably be about what you want to aim for. Um, if you want to go a little more budget on the earrings and belts, you can go Schultz and Blue Corals, but the accuracy is so important for a budget build. Um, I was thinking also about showing a tanky budget build, but in my opinion it's just not going to be that effective. And also you'll be spending a lot of money on items that aren't going to help you grind faster. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff that makes sense about going an accuracy damage build for a budget build. Um, if you're fighting somebody that's more over geared than you, you can still kill them if you get them into a CC like with this gear. But if you're a tanky budget build, you're not going to be able to kill anybody, and you'll probably still die to somebody that's overgeared to you, like in one CC. So it just feels much more effective to accept your death if you get CC'd, but try to kill people if you CC them. And this build will do that. I PvP'd a little bit uh, with a build similar. Well, it was pretty much this exact build, except I had Begs, Gloves, and his Arca, so I had a little bit more accuracy. But I f I'm pretty sure I hit some people that were full tet boss geared, and I was taking them out. Uh, it took a little while, but I would do it in a full CC if I got it off right, and then two CCs if I uh, didn't get the full damage. But um, yeah, I think you'll bully your grind spots if you go and uh, with something like this and you're at a proper grind spot with people that are at your gear level. So that's what I suggest. Um, we got two Grunnels here for the Hidden AP, the Roaring Magical Armor, which we get from a quest. These two rings you get from a quest. You can pre-order a tri bears for really cheap, or if you win a bid on it, it's only two million. Um, I don't think you can skimp on weapons, really. You want to go try here, and I think that won't be that expensive, um, trying these. So You'll probably be able to operate when they're all a duo, but you'll get more from trying them all. And you definitely want Hellric for the accuracy. You, you want accuracy with this build. That's how you're going to get your damage off. Um, I just have Zareth's shoes which is minus one crystal slot, but you get 200 stamina. You can use any shoes here, it's not that important. So moving on to end game builds. Um, just so you know, for these end game builds, I have everything at Tet that's armor or weapons, because I think that's reasonable. And then I either put the accessories at Tri or Tet, depending on which one it is, um, to kind of, you know. If you're getting Tet Crescents, you are You've been playing a long time and you make a lot of silver. So I'm putting it at like reasonable uh, items to get, you know. This is still very geared, but it's reasonable and it's kind of like the soft cap. So anyways, uh, this first build is just the PvE build. Um, it's full damage with some accuracy, I think, just because sorceresses are low accuracy classes, which I'll get into a little bit on the next gear build, that you could probably take this accuracy here in these slots and you'll probably do more damage in PvE. I'm not 100% sure about that because I don't know the evasion levels of mobs. So that's just kind of what I expect. If we're, in a, if we're a low accuracy class, then mobs have to have some evasion, and so this is good. Um, the Kudum Talisman, uh, according to many tests, shows that it does more damage than all the other offhands. And here's, oh, this isn't the right one. This one. There's a test by Big and Shiny showing uh, that he thinks a Tet Kudum may have somewhere between 65 and 67 AP for PvE only, and a try has somewhere around 50. Uh, but he can't confirm the Tet one because he accidentally overwrote that one when consolidating tests. So, anyways, if you're going to PvE, Kudum is your best bet. Uh, your next best bet is either an AP offhand or an accuracy offhand, depending on where you're grinding. And I, I don't personally know like the evasion levels of mobs. I've been told that peop uh, the mobs at P Q have really high evasion, so if you don't happen to have a 
Kudum, you can take an accuracy offhand to certain places and an AP offhand to others. So moving on, here we have full accuracy, which basically this the aim of this build is to do as much damage as possible. And this is where we're going to get into a little bit of tests here. So let's just start off by looking at some of the testing that Big and Shiny has done here for accuracy. He says that if a full Tet boss geared player with only the all evasion helmet crystals, so that's all the evasion that player has, just the Tet boss gear and evasion crystals and the helmet, goes up against a player with a Tet Zarka, Begs, and uh, the magic crystals for accuracy, and that's it. Um, they'll have about, they'll need 25% accuracy to be able to guarantee a hit on the target, right? So what that means is if we didn't take accuracy here, here, and here, we would need a skill to have 20 to 25% or 25% accuracy to guarantee a hit, which some of our skills do, like uh, Dream of Doom has 25%, um, uh, Grim Reaper has 20%, and both those are both important skills for decent damage. But most of our damage comes from Violation and Turn Backslash, and Violation has zero accuracy, and Turn Backslash only has five. So, in my opinion, when gearing a sorceress, you want to try to make that violation hit 100% of the time, which means going almost full accuracy. Uh, full accuracy or almost full accuracy. So, when you take this Hel Helric Talisman at, at Tet, I've seen Tess suggest that it's somewhere between 20 and 25. So, if you're hitting a person with the minimum evasion and you have a Helric Talisman, then your violation is going to hit pretty much 100% of the time, very close to it at the very least. But anybody that takes any more evasion above that, you're not going to be hitting them 100% of the time with your violation. So you're going to want to take some extra accuracy. And that's why I have full accuracy here for Tree Spirit Bell and Red Corals. So that way for every level of more uh, evasion somebody has, I'll be able to hit them. If you want to do... So, so to me, the choices are you either go like full AP here with the Tungrods and the uh, Basilisk or you take um, the full accuracy here. And if you think about it, if you take the full AP, you're going to be doing a little bit more damage to players that aren't, uh, that the accuracy is not going to be affected against because they don't have any more evasion. Just a little bit. It's not that much more damage. But if you took the full AP here in these three slots and you went up against somebody who had a lot of evasion, you're going to be feeling it. You're going to be doing a lot less damage to them. So basically I think the damage loss from taking accuracy here is negligible, but the damage gain you get when you're reversing a tanky evasion player is huge. So in my opinion, you take the uh, accuracy here. And there's no question in my mind that you should go Hellric Talisman, uh, no matter what. I don't think Nuver has a place on a class like Sorceress where our main damage skill has zero accuracy. If you're a class like a wizard that has a, like 25% accuracy on almost all their skil skills, then I think there's a case where you take accuracy here, and then you take like a Nuver Talisman or a Steel Dagger or whichever one you want. So, but Sorceress doesn't have that luxury because our Violation has zero accuracy. Like most of our damage comes from Violation and Turn Backslash, so it just makes a lot of sense to take a bunch of accuracy to do the most damage. Um, so yeah, that's my opinions here. You just go full damage with accuracy if you want to do that. Um, you're going to melt people, I think. You're just going to any target you hit, even full evasion targets, they'll be tanky but you'll be able to kill them. While if you went no accuracy against the full evasion target, you, you wouldn't even scratch them. You would do nothing. So This is uh, going to do damage to everybody in the game. Anybody you hit, you're going to do damage to them. <coughs> uh, this build is full evasion. And the reason evasion is really good on sorceress is because we have this skill called Flow of Darkness, which gives us 15 evasion. And that is really good. That's like a Centaurus Belt plus one evasion. And you're thinking, Fanta, Centaurus Belt has 14 DP. Where are you getting the evasion? And that's where the data mined DP stats come in. And I've asked Big and Shiny personally what he thinks about this. And he says he tested enough of it that he thinks it's fully accurate. So all basically what it does is it makes it takes the dp values of items like say uh tree spears armor here and it 
shows you the evasion and damage reduction number because that's what DP is made of. DP is made of evasion and damage reduction and this shows you what split you get from gear. So for example, if I take a Rick Talisman and take it to Tet, it has 29 evasion and only one DR. So it is a very good evasion offhand. 29 evasion is ridiculous. And then also Sissels, which gives AP and DP. Uh, it gives a uh, nine evasion. And Sissels has the added benefit of being cheaper than an Ogre or Leighton's. So um, it's the same stats overall. Like it just replaces evasion and AP. So that's really good. And the Centaurus spell is also full evasion. And basically when you go this, you're gonna have so much evasion that I don't think anything in the game will have enough accuracy to, to fully counteract it but maybe like a wizard with full accuracy, which I don't think you're going to run into any wizards with that kind of build. I think wizards are going to take a more balanced approach to take some accuracy to help counteract this kind of thing, but they're not going to go full accuracy. They would rather take uh, some more damage for the other players. So I think this is just going to be really tanky against everybody. Super strong. Let me scroll down to my notes here and see if I have anything else to say about this build. Um, oh, yeah. Um, if you're ever fighting somebody in a small scale or something, you can replace replace the Centaurus belt with the tri, uh, Tree Spirit belt. You get some more damage and accuracy. And so, like some players aren't going to have any accuracy at all. You're going to be tanky regardless of whether you take the Centaurus belt, and you can take the Tree Spirit to help you do a little bit more damage. Because any amount of extra accuracy and damage you can get is going to help you kill people. So. That's kind of a really cool part of this build. You can just swap out the belts if you feel like you want to do more damage or get a little more tanky. And in my opinion, this this is the build I'm going to shoot for, I think. But also, this next build is pretty appealing to me, and so is the accuracy build. So, anyways, let's go to the next build. Also, I just have a sharp Alchemy Stone of Destruction in all, all these builds, just because I think the 5% cast speed is too important to ignore. Like, I think the stats on... Alchemy Stone of Protection are just are better, really, compared to the uh, hidden AP and accuracy of the Destruction one. But the cast speed is just too good. I'm ad I'm addicted to cast speed myself, so <laughs> I wouldn't go without it. Okay, so this next build is a hybrid tanky build. So Kudum, oh, wrong one. Kudum has, if you split the DP up, it has 10 evasion and 12 DR. So you, ha you get a little bit of both there, and it has a lot of AP. Oh, there it is. And so between Sissel's Kudum and Centaur's, you still have a good amount of evasion and your flow of, dar flow of darkness, giving you 15 evasion. You still have a good amount of evasion. Um, but you also get some DP from the Ring of the Cadre Guardian, which I put it at Tet because you can get a tri ring of the Cadre Guardian for like 200 mil. Like it's, and there are only four mil on the market, a regular ring of the Cadre Guardian. So I think it's reasonable to put it at Tet here. It's probably going to cost you less than a tri ring of the Crescent Guardian. So I think that's fair. So basically the thought process I had here when making this build is that there's a lot of food buffs and like villa buffs and stuff in the game that give you damage reduction. And defensive stats scale better when you stack them. So when you get all those damage reduction buffs and you don't have any extra damage reduction, it just doesn't feel that great. But if you take some extra damage reduction in your build, then all those damage reduction buffs start to add up and you really get a good amount of damage reduction. And you also have evasion, so you just have all around tankiness here and I think it just takes advantage of uh, all those buffs in the game. So This is something I really want to test actually. I, I mean... I already have a Kudum Talisman, and I plan on just taking all of my Talismans to Tet eventually, and then I'll just need to buy a Ring of Cadre Guardian, and boom, compared to the Evasion build, it's just two different items, Rick versus Kudum, so it's not that much different, so that'll be something I really want to test when I get geared, but first I'll be shooting for this. Um, so this last build is just full tank. Um, it's, it, this doesn't appeal to me, I'm not going to be shooting for this, but uh, the Rosar Talisman, 
gives um, 24 evasion and 8 damage reduction and 2 more AP than Rick Talisman. So I thought overall it was a better choice for this build since you're taking a bunch of DR and a bunch of evasion. Uh, you can replace the red corals with uh, more defense if you want and just be completely invincible. But I think with red corals and these weapons you'll still do like some damage. And this is the one build that I take a Alchemy Stone of Protection on because it just feels too good. Uh, there's some tweaks you can make to this build, like you can use boss armor here. But Rakaba, compared to the Begs and the Gaius, is four more evasion and six more damage reduction. So that's pretty significant. But you lose 100 health from the Gaius and you lose 10 accuracy from the Begs. So the stats of 10 accuracy and 100 health are more valuable than four evasion and six DR normally, but this is a defensive build, so it just kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the builds that I would that I wanted to go over. I think these are some of the most efficient ways to build Sorceress, in my opinion, and hopefully I gave good enough reasons as to why I think they're good. Um, I hope this helps you gear your Sorceress, or whatever class you may be, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.